Uh, welcome to our episode of Cooking with Gas. I am the Power Quick Pot Jock, and I'm cooking with the Power Quick Pot. Some of you guys might have an instant pot, but it's pretty much the same concept. So sit back, relax, come along for the fun, watch me burn some stuff up or create a masterpiece. And we'll go from there. And so make sure you, if you haven't done so far, click the subscribe button and below. Tell your friends about me. Share the video however you want to do it. Click the alert as well so you'll know when I'm dropping new videos like this. And I'm trying to be more frequent with it as time permits because I know we all get busy in our day-to-day -day schedule. So welcome. Join in with the fun. Leave your comments below. If you want to see me try something else, I will. If it's not too fancy and, you know... Uh, too hard to do or something. Uh, otherwise, I'll be wasting food at the grocery store trying to affect that thing. So, it's sponsored by That Expression. So, click on the links below if you want some cool t shirt design and with the pick pot in mind and the Instapot as well. We got some funny tees available for you as well fitness gear, trendy apparel, all that good stuff. So, let's jump right into this thing. I don't want to hold you too long because we got two different cooking processes that we're going to have to do. When you're cooking spaghetti, I've seen it done where they dump everything, including the meat, and, and dash out. This way, I'm going to do it, what's called the saute function on the Power Quick Pot. I don't know if that function is available on the Instant Pot, but this is the Power Quick Pot, and I have a saute function on it that we'll be using in today's episode. And to cook the pasta, the sauce, and the meat all together, we'll be doing the pressure cooking with the lid on. So, to get things started, you got to, of course, take the lid off when you're doing a saute function of the pressure cooker of course you got the pot itself this is where all the magic happens all the flavors come into play so put that back in there we're ready to rock and before i go i start cooking any type of meat i always put like oil in the bottom of it to kind of coat the surface so that you won't get any burn marks or burn notices or error messages that pop pop up on your display i'm gonna put a little bit of olive oil in there let it do its thing. And sometimes even when you use olive oil, it's not a guarantee. So as you cook the meat, it's kind of important to kind of just shift the meat, you know, immediately once that thing starts getting up, getting some heat inside the pot going. Otherwise, it'll start sticking to the bottom. And it's not really burnt food. It's just a nuisance. It's just a sticky nuisance of a, whatever you're cooking to the bottom of the pot. So I'm just going to... Make sure this is coated evenly around the bottom of the pot. And I'm going to add water later on into it, but we don't need it right now. And also, so we're going to go ahead and just jump into the cooking process. So I'm going to hit saute. You got a bunch of displays here and buttons that you can choose from. Like you got your pressure, you got steam, saute, timer, temperature. We're going to go ahead and hit saute on this. And it's got the preset on it to beef, 20 minutes, pretty much the same kind of meat that we're cooking today, even though it's going to be turkey. So I'm going to go ahead and select that by depressing the power the round button. You got to put a little grip and you got to put a little muscle into it, I see. And so now it's turning red, an orange looking color, and it's set to 20 minutes. So it's going to start building up the temperature where you can start sauteing your meat. And I also have an onion that I've already chopped up into my turkey meat as well so you can do this you know inside of the pot a lot of people just dump the block in here i let mine defrost uh so it'd be that much quicker that quick that, that easier to cook so my turkey meat is already defrosted i've chopped up half a yellow onion into my turkey meat as well so i have it ready to go here and i've also kind of diced it up prior to putting it into the power quick pot that way I won't be jabbing away at the bottom of the pot. Uh, you never want to use a metal spatula. This one comes with it. Uh, it's pretty sturdy and firm, so you should be good to go. So I got the onions and the turkey meat here. It's already starting to sizzle. So I'm gonna dump all of that into the power quick pot. And we're gonna saute this meat and get started. Place this to the side. So you wanna, like I said, you wanna immediately start kind of sauteing your turkey meat so it won't stick to the bottom of your pot. 
when you dump your meat in there, you let it come build up the pressure, the heat, temperature. When it's starting to cook, it can still kind of grab the meat, kind of make it stick to the bottom of your pot. So right now, it's, it looks good. Nothing is sticking as well. I'm easily moving the meat back and forth across the bottom of the pot, so I don't expect any type of burn notices on the display as this thing cooks. And you want to make sure if you're doing this that this is going to get hot eventually, but right now it's kind of warm to the touch, so no issues there. But you might want to make sure that you have some type of little rag or you got like a little pot holder here that you kind of place on the side so you won't burn your hands. Because I know a lot of people out there in some of the videos that they have their kids helping them out. So just make sure you do take precautions out for nobody to get burned or hurt while they're trying to cook and enjoy a good meal. So, like I say, nothing is sticking to the bottom of it because I'm constantly kind of, uh, you know, sauteing the meat back and forth, not even giving it a chance to stick to the bottom of the pot. And you may want to try that out. Don't just throw it in there and walk away because you come back, it might start sticking. And then you're going to be doing this number right here, scraping the bottom of your pot. So right now, I'm just tossing it around. I'm not even touching the bottom of the pot. I'm just tossing the meat around. Got the onions. The onions in there as well. So it looks like I'm crying. That's because of the onions that's cooking in the pot. So it looks like it's pretty almost done. We're down to 17 minutes on the pot. We started at 20. So that's been about three minutes. I'm going to let it do its thing for a couple of more minutes just to make sure that it cooks all the way through. And some people like to drain, drain it after this process is done. I may or may not. I don't see too much because it was already thawed. I don't see too much of anything to drain, so I should be okay with just going to the next phase of this. Like I say, it's going to get hot and sometimes to step back for a little bit and jump back into the magic. So, I may not, like I, I may not drain it. I may just go to the next step, which is basically pouring in your water in it just to make sure it, it doesn't dry out when we add the pastas and the sauce and stuff. And you want to make sure that when you're doing this, that you have some type of fluid or liquid in between your spaghetti and everything else so it won't stick together like in a big clump when we go to the next cooking phase. So that's been about, I'll say four minutes or so. And I'm going to go ahead and all right, so that's been about five minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel it, turn everything off. Because the meat looks pretty, looks like it's ready. It's brown, onions, everything looks pretty good. I, like I say, I don't have that much water or, you know, fat, what you want to call it, from the meat. So I'm just going to go into the next phase. I'm not going to drain this thing off, none of that stuff. We're just going to go into the next cooking phase of it. Leave everything, all the flavors inside the pot. So you may have a lot of more, a lot more liquids in your pot if the meat is was frozen prior to cooking, prior to doing the saute on it. So you might want to drain it at that time. You can if you want to. I have very little, so I'm not. It's just a preference, you know. If you want, you know, just decide at that time when you're doing when you're cooking. So that looks pretty good to me. I like that. I'm actually going to, I'm going to pause it and show you what it looks like in the pot. Then I'm going to put a tripod, the camera back on the tripod so you can see the overall view once again. So we'll be right back. I'm going to pause it so you can get an overhead view. All right. So as you can see, the meat is brown, no pink. Onions is in there as well. And we're good to go to the next phase, which is adding water, the pasta, and the pasta sauce. So we'll be right back. Appreciate it. 
as you can see that the meat is already well cooked we're ready to go to the next phase of it which is i'm gonna add some water to this thing and i'm gonna add about a cup of water to it that kind of calms everything down so we can add the pasta sauce and the pasta and finish this thing up, give it a taste test, and we will be good to go. Before I do that, I wanna just go ahead, and, like I say, it came out perfect. Nothing stuck to the bottom of the pot. And now that I've added water, that's even better. So that's a plus. Just make sure you don't overcook it to where the meat starts sticking to the bottom of the pot. And if you use enough olive oil and shift it as you put the meat in and you're sauteing it, it shouldn't stick on you, so. So the water is added to that. I'm going to add a little of my pasta sauce before I add my spaghetti. So that's the only time that I'm going to stir this up. So I'm not going to stir anything up from this point on. So after I pour this pasta sauce here in it. So I'm going to pour a little sauce in it. It's pretty chunky, as you can see. I'm going to mix it up one final time to where all the the pasta sauce is on top of the hamburger meat. Well, not the hamburger meat, but the turkey meat. And now you got a mixture of water, pasta sauce, and the hamburger meat that's in a layer that's floating waiting for you to put on the spaghetti. I'm using whole grain here. You can use whatever you want to use. Uh, but if you get into a lot of that thick pasta, it might take a little longer for you to cook it. But we should be okay with just a little thin whole grain spaghetti. I'm going to take a handful of this stuff. Set that to the side. And just break that up. And I'm gonna do one layer, and then I'm gonna cross the layer with the rest of it. So you kind of got it like this right here, like a little number sign. So you wanna do a, two layers on that. And so that's enough. You can add a little bit more if you want to, but I kind of use like half a box, use a little bit more. It's fine, so I'm just gonna break it up again. Go the other way with it, layer the spaghetti, and back the other way. So that should do it. The rest of the spaghetti sauce, I'm just gonna dump on top of it. We're gonna close the lid on it, and we're gonna set it to about eight minutes and forget it. So be careful that you don't splash it around where you mess the layers of spaghetti up. So this is on top of the spaghetti, of course. So you start it out with hamburg olive oil, hamburger meat, water, spaghetti sauce, spaghetti, and now the spaghetti sauce again. So a lot of people might want to rinse this out. You can if you want to, just to be safe. Because right now you got the spaghetti sauce that's touching the rim of the power quick pot. And if you want to prevent burns on the side of it, just kind of Shake a little water up and then pour it kind of around the edges instead of the center. And it builds like a water barrier around the rim of the pot. That's just optional. You know, we'll see if it works out for us. If not, uh, you don't have to try that. But I'm gonna see how that works out by pouring a rim of ring of water around the sauce so to kind of get the sauce off of the pot itself. So, done deal. Let's put the lid back on. Close it up, power the pressure cooker back up, and we're going to go down to, uh, we're going to do custom. It's flashing custom right now, so I'm going to press the button, and now it's set to 30 minutes on medium temperature, but I don't want to cook this for 30 minutes, minutes. so I'm going to hit timer on it. It's now flashing for me to set the time that I want this thing to cook. I'm going to drop that down to eight minutes. And I'm just going to hit go. Depress the button again. It starts the cooking process. Now it's going to build up the pressure and then start cooking at eight minutes. So you're looking at, who knows, maybe 12 to 13 minutes total when you're cooking that. Add another five. You know, you've got under 20 minutes uh, and you're done with your spaghetti. So we'll be right back. We're going to let that thing build the pressure, start cooking. We're going to release the, uh, the, the valve on it, let it steam out, 
and we should do it be able to do the taste test and see what we have inside this pot and then that'll be it for the show today so hold on for a second we'll be right back once this thing does what it, what it, what it normally do so power quick pot be right back all right so welcome back as you can see the eight minute cooking process is done and right now we're going to go until we release the valve on this thing and let it be pressurized make sure you're not standing over this little vent here so you won't get any scalds or, in, or, or, in, or injured it's not that hot but it's going to be safe so eight minutes done we we'll go ahead and let this valve release let it do its thing it may release for about maybe two to three minutes we'll come back and we'll open up the pot and see what we have to do have have we have uh cooked out. so like i said it's going to do its thing kitchen smells pretty good right now so hopefully we have some good tasty try out in a few minutes be right back so we are back and it took about three minutes to depressurize so now we're going to go up open the lid up and see what we have in store hopefully nothing burned it was on the, it's not clumped up and we have a nice treat to eat throughout the rest of the week the day however you want to go it so let's open the lid up and see if we have in the store so turn it to open lift the lid and basically just let that drop in there the water drop back in there and i don't see any scorch marks around the rim i'm gonna pause it and show you what i'm looking at right now before i mix this stuff up because right now it just looks like a big soupy gulp mixture of who knows what. So I'm going to pause it so you can get the overhead view and see around the rim that this sauce did not burn to it or, or stick to it. Sort. So this is what we have here. As you can see, you can kind of see where I pour the water around the rim where it would not touch it. The sauce wouldn't burn or stick to the side of the pot. So that's a good thing and I'm going to stir it up and then we'll go from there. And so as you can see, I'm stirring it up now. It's not hard. It's stuck together. Everything looks good. The meat's on the bottom. So I just got to get down to the bottom and turn the meat over into the spaghetti. And it looks like everything came out perfect. It's not even that, that soupy once I get everything from the bottom, the meat from the bottom. So it looks pretty good to me so far. So I'm going to pause the video, put it back on the tripod, and then we'll do the taste test and close out the video. All right, be right back. So like I say, once you get the meat from the bottom of the pot and mix it thoroughly with the spaghetti and the sauce, everything came out perfect. It's not soupy at all. The portion is bright and it looks good. Can't wait to taste it. Of course, it's hot. So you be careful. Don't just, you know, a lot of people are hungry and they're greedy and they just like to dive right into it and bite it. And they're like, uh huh. Then the, the food burns your lips or your tongue and you can't taste, taste nothing for another two hours or so. So just bro, make sure everything is cooled down before you try it out. Of course, you know, that's just common sense. And this looks real good to me. It's not soupy, you know, it's, yeah, not soupy at all. So, yeah, it's a try. The bottom is completely, I can drag the teeth of the spoon across the bottom, and I don't feel anything that's burned on it. So, that's perfect. That came out well. So, I'm going to take a scoop, throw it in a little bowl, and see what we have. Look at that. Not runny or soupy. You don't have to wait to it cool off before it gets, you know, a little more solid. Uh, it's ready to go right now. That's, that looks delicious. So I'm just drop that in there. And you can see the turkey meat, everything. The noodles, they weren't sticking together or nothing. Just, just a perfect bowl of spaghetti. I'm even surprised that it came out like that. So... That actually was the perfect recipe for me. So now I'm gonna just tar give it a taste test. Mm. 
That was delicious. So there you have it. Spaghetti. Mmm. That was perfect. Spaghetti in the Power Quick Pot. It's a done deal. It's a wrap. Make sure you watch the video and take notes because that came out perfectly. No burn marks around the ring. No burn marks on the bottom of the pan. It's not soupy. Everything is solid. It's not, you know, all you need now is add a little, what do you, um, uh, cheese to add what a cheese is what you want to use for it, uh, Parmesan, so forth and so on, and just add your little touch to it, and that's a done deal. So I'm going to tear that bowl up uh, throughout the rest of the day. I'm going to be diving into this thing. I already know it, so that might not be a good thing to cook this by myself. I should invite some people over to have some as well. But that's another addition of cooking with gas, the Power Quick Pot Jock. The same thing applies to the Instant Pot. You know, you need to be familiar with how your pot settings are so you won't get any burn marks or anything like that when you're trying to use the Instant Pot. But for the Power Quick Pot, that's a done deal. It came out absolutely perfect. So subscribe if you haven't. Tell your friends. Click the alert button so you can know when I'm dropping another video. Appreciate you joining. Until next time, we'll see you again from Guy Expression. Check out the links below. I got some Power Quick Pot and some Instant Pot t-shirts that's on, available for sale. So give us a try. Try them out. Come back to another episode of Cooking with Gas. And we are out. Till next time.